Long ago, in days of old, kings had rubies sewn into their clothes and wore ropes of pearls around their necks to show off their wealth and power. Male jewelry was especially popular during the Renaissance, and of course, earrings never went out of style for pirates. But these days, adornments like necklaces, rings, bracelets, brooches, and earrings are typically associated with women. It raises the question, why did some men wear so much jewelry in the past? Today, we're going to take a look at which men wore jewelry in the past and why. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what other historical fashions you would like to hear about. Okay, let's see some historical ombre bling. Hans Holbein's portrait of Henry VIII is one of the most famous royal portraits in history, and you won't have to use a magnifying glass to notice a lot of jewelry in the painting. Henry's wide necklace sparkles with jewels, and rubies glimmer like buttons down the front of his expensive, ornate outfit. Even the sleeves have jewels sewn in, and multiple rings adorn the ruler's hands. But why would a male monarch from the 16th century want to be shown wearing jewelry? Well, today we mainly associate jewelry with women, but it wasn't that way in the past. Once upon a time, men donned jewelry to project an image of wealth and social status. That portrait of Henry wasn't just a pretty picture. It was a way of telling anyone who saw it, I have all this bling because I'm the king. Much like fancy tailored clothing, jewelry was a way for men to show off their wealth. During the Renaissance, men's clothing became more elaborate and more expensive. Rich, opulent fabrics were an effective way to convey wealth and power, and jewelry helped reinforce that message. Take the portrait of Gustavus III of Sweden, painted by Alexander Roslin in 1777. When you look at the painting, the monarch's elaborate necklace is probably the first place your eye goes. The four-tiered necklace includes symbols of status and wealth, providing visual testimony of the king's power. Further reinforcing the point is that the piece lays on top of an expensive fur coat, and then there's the ruler's clothes, which are embroidered in silver thread. The portrait is designed to pile as much wealth as possible onto the ruler's body, but the focal point is definitely the jewelry. Earrings were quite fashionable for men in 16th century England. In fact, Sir Walter Raleigh, the explorer and spy rumored to be the lover of Queen Elizabeth, loved a good pearl earring. In one famous portrait, he is shown with a massive pearl in his ear. As a British chronicle wrote in 1577, some lusty courtiers also, and gentlemen of courage, wear either rings of gold, stones, or pearls in their ears, where they imagine the workmanship of God to be no little amended. In 1616, Walter Raleigh set off to look for the fabled city of El Dorado. You know, like in that DreamWorks movie with Kenneth Branagh and Kevin Kline. Unlike the characters in that movie, though, Raleigh violated a peace treaty between Britain and Spain. That got him arrested, and in 1618, despite his fabulous taste in earrings, he was eventually executed. Male rulers weren't the only ones who wore jewelry. So did some of their employees. Men like Jacopo Strada, an Italian courtier who worked for various German rulers, also wanted to show off his wealth by donning jewelry. A 1568 portrait of him by Titian depicts Strada in his study, surrounded by wealth and evidence of his learning. He wears an elaborate gold chain, likely a gift from Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian II. He also holds an antique statue, and the coins casually tossed on his desk, plus the fur cape, are all further evidence of his wealth. Jewelry wasn't just a way to show off wealth. It was also a way for rulers to tip their courtiers with expensive gifts. Speaking of earrings, Charles I of England was famous for provoking the civil war that ultimately cost him his head. But before he was put on trial for treason, he was equally famous for his fashion sense. His wardrobe is known to have included an enormous pearl earring that he wore from his teenage years right up until his execution. Charles's jewelry was worth a small fortune. His pearl was five-eighths of an inch long and sported a tiny gold crown plus an orb and cross. It was worth so much that wearing it to his execution might have been a bad idea. According to one report, as soon as his head had fallen, the witnesses of the dreadful scene rushed forward, ready to imbue their hands in his blood in order to secure the royal jewel. We assume Charles didn't really care about what happened to it since, you know, he didn't have a head. Pirates loved to wear hoop earrings, but the jewelry wasn't just for show and fashion. It also served an important function. It was insurance to make sure that the pirate received a proper burial. 
Hoop earrings were usually made of gold, but silver was a slightly less expensive alternative. When the pirate died, the precious metal could be sold or melted down to pay for a funeral. The practice depended on the kindness of other pirates, but they had a code of honor that ensured the earrings weren't pocketed. At least, that was the idea. Some pirates even engraved the name of their home port on the inside of the hoop, so that their final resting place could be close to family. It's not exactly the same as kings donning jewelry, but it shows the practical side of carrying wealth in the form of jewelry. As a famous painting of Holy Roman Emperor Charles V by Juan Pantoja de la Cruz shows, even armor was sometimes embellished and decorated to look like jewelry. Now to be clear, this sort of armor would never actually be worn into battle. It was meant for decorative purposes. The armor not only associated the wearer with military strength and power, it also showed the ruler's wealth. Take the feathered helmet which sits next to Charles in the painting. Clearly, it has not seen the battlefield. But the rich color and the gold embellishments all speak to the ruler's status. As Earl A. Powell III, director of the National Gallery of Art, said, armor in the Renaissance was an artistic symbol of martial and sovereign power. The armor on view will reinforce the power of the sitter. We're using the word power a lot here because above and beyond all else, male jewelry was meant to project the message, I am really, really, really powerful. Rings are a bit of an anomaly in that they are still considered acceptable forms of jewelry for men today, although it's largely limited to things like wedding bands and class rings. But in the past, many men wore rings on a regular basis. Rings served two functions. First, like all the other jewels, they were evidence of wealth, since they were made of precious metals and often included expensive stones. But they were also a way to identify allegiances. While advertising wealth and power may have been the main point of all the jewelry, it wasn't the only point. Jewelry also showed social alliances. Many rings had the symbol or crest of a family. They could be used to seal wax envelopes or worn for social occasions to make it clear which alliances commanded a man's loyalty. So, during an era where appearance was everything, jewelry was really just one more way to send a message. During the Renaissance, it was Europeans who reached the greatest heights of showing off jewels. But they weren't the only ones who did it. Around the world, men wore jewelry for all kinds of reasons. Ayana men, indigenous to Japan, pierced their ears until the Japanese government made it illegal in the late 1800s. Some Native American tribes used facial piercings and jewelry for religious rituals. And as a well-known painting of Nana Fadnavis, who worked for the Maratha Empire in the 1700s, shows men in India were wearing jewelry during the same time European men were dressing up for portraits. The fashion for male jewelry in the Renaissance was nothing new. Ancient Greek men wore crowns of laurel leaves, which admittedly wasn't as flashy as later royal bling, but were still an important early form of jewelry. It's also known that ancient Roman men wore earrings and rings. And the Celts were master goldsmiths, fashioning torques or open necklaces that were worn by men. Meanwhile, in ancient Egypt, men wore bracelets, collars, rings, and armbands of gold and precious stones. Take the famous painting by Claude Vignon, which depicts Croesus, the ancient Greek king, renowned for his wealth. In order to convey Croesus' riches, the artist shows the ancient Greek decked out like a contemporary king of the 1630s. He's shown wearing all kinds of jewelry, from multiple dangling pearl necklaces to the crown inset with more precious stones. The painting is more proof of how 17th century European men thought jewelry was an important tool to show off wealth. Necklaces were an extremely effective way for men to display their wealth. In 1625, Michiel Janssen van Mierefeldt painted a portrait of George Villers, the first Duke of Buckingham, which depicted its subject wearing a long rope of pearls draped around his neck. For context, pearls were an expensive imported item that were popular in the Renaissance. Objects like that pearl necklace, which screamed wealth and power, became part of the wearer's identity. The Renaissance was an age of conspicuous consumption, and few things made that consumption more visible than men's jewelry. If you're wondering when the age of royalty donning jewels and expensive clothes to impress people died out, it didn't. In fact, one famous portrait of King George VI, the father of Britain's current queen, shows George wearing a necklace which represents the Order of the Garter, England's oldest and most prestigious chivalric society, which dates back to the 1300s. The painting, which was done by Sir Gerald Kelly, also depicts the king with a scepter in his right hand. 
The scepter not only represents ruling power, it's also a pretty fancy piece of jewelry. The Imperial State Crown, which is also technically jewelry, sits on a table behind him. And the royal trend still hasn't died out. Prince William himself was recently wearing jewelry at a service associated with the same order. Will fashion once again follow royal trends and cause a resurgence of men wearing jewelry? Only time will tell. So what do you think? What ice would you wear to show your status? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from Our Weird History.